The secret of the old... The year, 1930. The place, the road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend, Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have some... The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that awaits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. Well, hello. I'll bet my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. Emily told me your name. It's... I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian. But only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Mmm, it smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the lilac in specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. She didn't? Don't get me wrong, she can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. Is she all right? Well, now that's hard to say. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Glory and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. It was nice of you to say yes. I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. Help her do what? She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up. She's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. It meant a lot to me. When Helen told me I felt so bad for you, I had to do something. You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. Well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor, a big favor. You and your dad? What kind of favor? Shh! What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? You need to put something in a safe? See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What do you mean, all things considered? Strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Come on, we better get out of here! This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky, and that's when times are good. Who was in the kitchen this morning? Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset, but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? <sighs> I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire, so now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. 
Emily? My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. Jane said that you were the last one to use the stove. Is that true? I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, Time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Did he have any family? No, he always said Mom and I were his family. Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great-aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him, and he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing? It just wasn't like him. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer, I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. You don't sound very happy about it. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please? It would be such a big help. Sure. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. I'll be back in a little bit. Don't forget to call your father. Got it. Looks like someone recently had a key appraised. Over here, Miss Drew. Find the toy mouse and give it to Yuri, would you please? Otherwise, he'll just keep meowing. He hates strangers. How nice of you to drop by. And thank you for walking instead of parking in the driveway. I'm expecting a pupil I'd hate for her to have to park on the road. Mr. Topham? Richard Topham at your service. What were you doing just now? I was in the process of trying to make these spoons move by using nothing but my own psychic energy. Have you ever focused sunlight through a magnifying glass until it was a minute yet searing point of light, Miss Drew? Uh, yeah, I guess. You see, that's what I do with my cerebral emanations, my thoughts. I focus them until they're a beam of pure energy which ultimately disrupts and transforms the molecular force field surrounding the target object. Is that what you teach people in your school? How to beam their thoughts? I take them through exercises designed to help them increase their output of phantasmic energy. If you want to sign up for an introductory session, I believe I have an opening today. No, thank you. Oh. I'm afraid I'm busy, young lady. Far too busy to engage in idle conversation. When would be a good time for me to come back? I'll be blunt, Miss Drew. I've discovered that the more time I spend with the, uh, shall we say, intellectually unendowed, the more my cerebral pulsations seem to diminish. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you further unless and until you prove that you are worthy. That is, that your brain waves are not unacceptably inferior and thus deleterious to mine. How would I do that? What I have here is an exercise in logic. If you can discern the correct solution, then I'll know that conversing with you will do me no psychic harm. You may take it with you. Good luck and good day. Would it be okay if I looked around? Go right ahead. The place is more like a museum than a house. Was this Josiah's clock? Everything in here was Josiah's. Wonder what this mirror is doing in here. What are you when you win, Bard Bounce? What poet is the cat's meow?
What will Para, my miniature golf course, get you? What's Gloria's middle name? B coder is in the r rivet. Two to the right. It looks like Josiah lent a trivet to someone, but I can't make out to whom. I saw before is gone. Mrs. Sheldon? Yes? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. Did you go to Titusville Telco and get my bridge cards from Miss Joukowsky? Well, no, but... You never know when... A vending machine that just sells toys. <laughs> Keen! Hello, are you Mr. Waddell? So what if I am? I found this receipt, and I just wondered what you could tell me about it. Let me see that. One key, determine resale value, item 493. Oh yeah, this was for that key Jim Archer wanted me to appraise. Jim Archer wanted you to appraise a key? It was very ornate, had jewels all over it. Fake jewels, as it turned out. When I told him it was worthless, the cheapskate refused to pay me and told me to keep it. Do you think I could have it? Sure, once you pay the appraisal fee. Which is? A dollar and fifty cents. Here you go. Good. Here's the key. Enjoy. Hello. I'm looking for Jim Archer. Right through that door. Hello. Are you Nancy Drew? Yes. Are you Mr. Archer? Yes, ma'am. Jim Archer. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name when it comes to this fine enterprise. I hear that some businesses aren't doing so well these days. Ever since the stock market crashed, one business after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. Is your bank doing okay? I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know, but... All right, then just bring it by. Sorry for the interruption. How can I help you? I guess I'll be going. Come back any time. Where did you get this clock? Josiah Crowley gave it to me. It stopped keeping time the minute he walked out the door. Hello again. The key that you had Mr. Waddell appraise. Could that be the key to the clock that Josiah Crowley gave you? It might have been, I suppose. You know about that? Yes. In fact, I paid the appraisal fee. I have the key right here. How industrious of you. You see, when he told me the key was worthless, I lost all interest in it. So, it would be alright if I kept the key for myself? I have no use for it. In fact, if you want that old clock, you can have it too. I guess I'll be going. Goodbye now. It would sure be nice to be able to open this thing. Yeah? Are you Miss Joukowsky? Yeah, and you are? 
Ha, huh, you pick up those tickets? Well, no. Ah, keep your shirt on. Raffle tickets? Orphanage. Mrs. O'Shea, now. Excuse me, are you Mrs. O'Shea? Yes. My name is Nancy Drew, and... Hi, do you have five toys for me? I certainly do. Oh, that's wonderful. You're such a saint, you hear me? A saint. I'd better get these inside before the children see them. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. O'Shea, the raffle tickets? Oh, the raffle tickets? I don't have them, dear. You'll have to pick them up from Phelps Print Shop. Then just take them straight to Mr. Kowski. We don't pull hair, Ralphie. Especially when we have jelly on our hands. <sighs> Phelps Print Shop. Wonderful. Sorry, young lady. I'm about to close. I'm just here to pick up the raffle tickets you printed for Mrs. O'Shea. Aw, oh, darn it. I did tell her I'd have those done today, didn't I? Well, I'm sorry, but they're just gonna have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, but I need to have them today. And I need to go fishing. Fishing? My brother-in-law thinks he's hot stuff because he caught an 18-inch largemouth bass this morning. So I bet him I could catch a 19-incher by the end of the day. And if I do, I get his stamp collection. And if I don't, he gets mine. And since stamp collecting is about the only hobby I can afford these days, I am going fishing. I know. You stay here and print those raffle tickets, and I'll go fishing for you. Not everybody can catch a 19-inch largemouth bass, you know. It takes skill and muscle and brains. Bass are pretty smart. I can do it, Mr. Phelps. You better be right, because you're not getting those raffle tickets until I get my 19-incher can use my gear. I left everything out at the fishing hole. Great. I'll see you later. First thing I need to do is bait my hook. Oh, yuck. Now I toss this in the water. And when the bobber goes under the water, I need to pull the line up fast. One, an old shoe. Maybe there's money inside it. Look at that! I caught money! Now that's my kind of fishing. I caught one! Looks like 19 inches to me. Ew, that fish I caught really smells. Let's see what you got in there. How about that? You did it. Here, let me take it from you. <laughs> Please do. I think it's starting to get a little ripe. Just rest yourself a minute while I get those raffle tickets. There you go. Ten dozen tickets to the annual Orphan's Benefit. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go make a telephone call. To your brother-in-law? Yeah, the one who used to collect stamps. <laughs> Bye. I guess I should answer that. Hello? Nancy? Dad? Oh, shoot, I was supposed to call you. Yes, you were. The phone company said this was the only line into the Lilac Inn now. What happened? It's kind of a long story, but what about you? Is everything okay there? Everything's fine. I called because I'd like you to run an errand for me, that's all. Sure. What do you want me to do? I need to get some documents from a colleague over there. I thought since you were in the area, you could pick them up, save him paying postage. Sure. What's the address? He said he'd just leave them for you at the telegraph office. Just drive into town and look for tubby telegrams. 
He said you can't miss it. Will do. These papers are extremely important, Nancy. I will pick them up, Dad. Good. Remember, watch your gas gauge and get gas when you're low so you don't run out. And try to avoid potholes. The more you hit, the likely it is you'll wind up with a flat. Yes, Dad. And if you do get a flat, take it off and put on your spare, and then head straight to a gas station and get it fixed. Yes, Dad. All right, lecture over. Have you found out why Miss Crandall asked you to visit? I'd rather not go into it right now. All right, but in the meantime... I know, I know. Pick up those documents. That's my girl. Goodbye, Dad. Keep in touch. Hi, Nancy. What was your mother's middle name? Lois. Why? Oh, just curious. I'll be back in a little bit. You're the bee's knees. adjust the mirror so that the light hits them just right. Hello, Miss Drew. Hello, Mr. Topham. Am I to assume that you have the correct solution to that logic problem? Right here. Let's have a look. <laughs> Why, you appear to have indeed found the solution. Well, since you've proved yourself to be intellectually above average, which means talking to you should do me no harm, what would you like to talk about? Do you by any chance know who Marcel is? Marcel was what Josiah called his favorite hat. His hat? The man named his hat? He loved that hat, so to him, naming it made perfect sense. Do you still have Marcel? No, as a matter of fact, I gave that hat to Gloria Crandall. She said she was fond of the old fellow and wanted something to remember him by, although I suspect the real reason she wanted that hat was to see if he'd stashed any money in it. Josiah ordered something from the Krollmeister Crystal Company just before he passed away. Do you know if it ever arrived? You must be talking about that chunk of quartz that came last winter. 
I still have it right here. Why? I was wondering if I could buy it from you. For my father. He loves quartz. Perhaps we can work something out. You see, amazing as this is going to sound, I am able to project my thoughts into another person's brain. Really? The only problem is not everyone has the intellectual capacity to receive my thoughts. But since you have already demonstrated a high level of intelligence, yes, you may very well be the ideal subject. Me? Really? You are going to help me prove that I am telepathic. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to shuffle a deck which contains five sets of these cards. Then I'm going to turn my back, draw a card, look at it, and start transmitting my thoughts. When you receive my thoughts, you will identify the card I'm looking at. Once you correctly identify five cards in a row, I'll give you that piece of quartz. But what if I can't do it? Just stay focused on the cards and my superior brain power will do the rest. Very well, let's begin. Tell me, what card is this? I think it's this one. You Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. Very good. You did it. Well, actually, I did it. But in any case, thank you for your assistance. Here's the piece of crystal that Josiah ordered. Take it. You've earned it. Well, actually, I earned it, but let's not quibble. But, Mr. Topham, I didn't really... I mean, you didn't really... I mean, I'm afraid that subconsciously you may have... <sighs> Yes? Never mind. Do you need anything else? It was nice talking to you. I'm sure it was. Hi, Nancy. Would you happen to know where your mother put Josiah's favorite hat? Look in the drawer right below me. That's where all Mom's mementos are. I'll be back in a little bit. You're the bee's knees. Looks like a safe deposit box key. Hi, you got those raffle tickets for me? I sure do. Great. And here are Mrs. Sheldon's bridge cards. One of the gals spilled Moxie all over them, but I cleaned them up real good, so let's not tell Mrs. Sheldon, okay? Okay. Thanks for your help, Miss Joukowsky. Thanks for your help. Bye now. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Now what? I need for you to cut a blank from this piece of quartz. No big deal. Let's see it. The blank needs to be just like the one you made before for Josiah Crowley. Like I said, no big deal. You're going to have to cough up two dollars, though. You can pay me when you pick it up. Good day. Hello again. Did Josiah Crowley have a safe deposit box here? As a matter of fact, he did. Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. Could this be it? It is from this bank. May I see if it opens the box? It takes two keys to open a safe deposit box. The owner's key and my key. And in this case, I'm under no obligation to open it for you. Oh, but I... However, were you to do me a small favor... Sure! I hired a seamstress to make a dress for my wife's birthday next week. Unfortunately, the seamstress and I had a... falling out. And now I need to find someone to finish the dress. Just hire a new seamstress. Oh, the fact of the matter is, the dressmaker quit because I couldn't pay her. I misled you before. Business is not fine. This bank is on the brink of ruin. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Archer. I wanted to get my wife something nice because, well, it might be the last nice thing she gets for a long, long time. Now, Emily once mentioned that Jane used to be a dressmaker. How much more has to be done on the dress? I have it right here. The seamstress said that all the pieces have been cut out and basted together. All that's needed is a sewing machine. When it's finished, bring it back and I'll let you try that key in Josiah's safe deposit box. I guess I'll be going. Come back any time.
Is this your sewing machine? Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to be dressmakers. Mom Would was it be going to... There's no needle. So, is Emily all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? She was showing it to me just before the explosion. Now it's gone. Someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! If you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? Who else knew Emily had that jewelry? When Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry. It's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess better go call the sheriff. Would you happen to know where the needle for the sewing machine in Emily's room is? I moved all of Gloria's sewing things out of there and put them in a little box. Look, I'm supposed to get the pies we baked before all the hullabaloo this morning ready for the delivery man. They gotta be put in the shipping container just so or he casts a kitten. This is how he wants them organized. Now why don't you go out on the porch and get those pies ready to go while I look for that sewing box? Sounds good. There, that should do it. Looks like there might be some kind of tunnel around here. Thanks for doing the pies. The more I do it, the worse I seem to get at it. Here's that box. I'm sure that sewing machine needle is in there somewhere. I see it. Remember, when it comes to using it, you're on your own, kiddo. Well, I'll talk to you later. Alrighty dighty. From the look Jeepers, I'm behind one of the walls in Emily's room. And a swell. An old piggy bank. that. Guess I better not leave the lights on. Jeepers, that sounds like Richard Topham. This door must open right into his living room. Guess I better not leave the lights on. There. Not bad, Miss Drew. Not bad at all. I can't play that here. bridge cards right here good and here is Josiah's trivet 
I didn't realize when I asked to borrow it that it was such an eyesore. But once a sumptuous dish of my buff stroganoff was placed atop it, I assure you, no one noticed. Now do run along. My guests will be arriving any minute, and that dress of yours, it's, uh, well. I like this dress. It's very flouncy. How's the dress coming? All done. This is beautiful. Thank you. Now let's see if that key you found opens up Josiah's safe deposit box. That was... But that is not Josiah's will. It looks like some kind of journal. Would it be okay if I kept this? If it was money or jewelry or something like that, I'd turn it over to Topham. But a journal? Finders keepers, as far as I'm concerned. I'll be at my desk if you need me. It's locked, naturally. Flute. Kiram. Bisbee, 7.050 megahertz. It looks. Anything else I can do for you? I guess I'll be going. Give my best to Emily. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Are you done making that blank? Have you got my fee? Right here. Good. Here's the blank I cut for you. Enjoy. Now I'm hearing things. Guess I better not leave the lights on. I don't hear anybody. Now would be a good time for me to sneak inside and have a quick look around. <laughs> Josiah must have circled these quotes, but why? Something tells me I better write down all the stuff that's circled here in my journal. Guess I better not leave the lights on. Looks like Josiah was a ham radio operator. Is anyone out there? Hello? Can anyone hear me? I'm Thisby, but only Pop calls me that. Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm afraid I have some bad news about Puck. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Speak to me. Hello? This is Thisby. Are you the young lady I talked to before? Yes, I'm pretty sure I know the cue now. I'm listening. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. <coughs> the authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way. The authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way? That's what I was to say. Although my delivery was much better when Puck was coaching me. So Puck told you he was an actor? He told me that acting was his life and that he'd gotten rich and famous doing it. No matter who he was to the rest of the world, that's what he was to me and that's how I want to remember him. And now, as Puck was fond of saying, I bid you adieu. Over and out.
Is anyone out there? Hello? Can anyone hear me? This is Pyramus. Who are you? My name's Nancy Drew. Does somebody named Puck usually call you on this frequency? Pyramus, can you hear me? Hello? This is Pyramus. Is this whoever it was before? Yes, Nancy Drew. And I think I know the Shakespeare quote Puck used to rattle off when he wanted you to say that stupid saying. Think so? Well, let's hear it. Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. How'd you know? Long story. What did he tell you to say in response? Wait a minute. I had to write it down. Here. You're gonna love this. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. I told you it was stupid. I really appreciate your help. Just out of curiosity, what kind of car did Puck drive, do you know? I don't think he had a car. And he tried to tell me he was rich. Over and out. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? This is Flute, but you sure don't sound like Puck, so explain yourself. Uh, my name's Nancy Drew. Hello? Flute? Are you there? Flute here. That you, Nancy Drew? Yes, it's me. And I think I know the Shakespeare passage that Puck wanted you to listen for. Let's hear it. Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. That's it. Here, let me check my logbook for the response. Uh, now I'm supposed to say, leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about. Leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about? Those were Puck's exact words. Well, hope I've been of some help. Over and out. I wonder what these symbols mean. A golf ball, no doubt meant to be used on that golf course of Josiah's. Oh, a miniature golf course. Swell. Another safe deposit box key? Emily, please, just sit down. It's all right. It's not all right. Stop lying. You've got to go talk to Emily. She's in a bad way. What do you mean? What's happened? Please, go talk to her. She won't listen to me. I'm no help at all. Hello again. I found another safe deposit box key that belonged to Josiah. Impossible. Josiah only had one box, and you've already opened it. But this has to be Josiah's key. It is one of ours. Where did you get it? I won it playing golf at Josiah's with a special ball. I had to ace one of the holes. Why does that sound familiar? I know why. That's what Clara always called me, her ace in the hole. That's who this key belongs to, Clara Pickford. So, Clara Pickford. I wonder what this Gloria is. Gloria Dowd, now Crandall, and Jane Willoughby, circa 1912. Jane Willoughby? That doesn't look the least bit like Jane Willoughby. No, it certainly doesn't. I'd better get back to the Lilac Inn and have a talk with her right now. Would you please? I'm kind of in a hurry. 
You're not going anywhere until you tell me who you really are. What are you talking about? I just saw a picture of Jane Willoughby. The real Jane Willoughby. It's been swell knowing you, sister. I can't let Jane out of my sight. State line. I know. I'll take a shortcut and head her off. Why couldn't you just mind your own business? Dear Ned, I know you'll be home from school in a couple of days, but I couldn't wait to tell you. I just solved a mystery. I figured out that Emily Crandall's guardian was really an imposter named Marion, 